Um, and the reason for, 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 their, uh, for, for their excommunication um, from, from our society, our mainstream society, is for engaging in precisely the same kind of drug activity that is largely ignored in middle class and upper middle class white communities. People often say to me, well, if people, if, you know, black and brown men don't want to be labeled felons, well, then they just shouldn't commit drug crimes. Um, but, you know, we have known as a nation for a long time now that simply prohibiting drug activity does not lead people to stop using um, illegal drugs. We learned that lesson with alcohol prohibition. Banning the use of alcohol didn't discourage many people from using or selling alcohol. Um, and people of color are no more likely to use or sell illegal drugs than whites. Our stereotype of a drug dealer in the United States is of an African-American kid standing on a street corner with his pants hanging down. But the reality is that drug dealing happens everywhere in America. Drug markets in the United States, much like our society generally, is relatively segregated by race. We're going to have Blacks to leave it there for part Blacks, one of this interview, Michelle Alexander, but we're going to ask you to stay after for part two, which we'll play on Democracy Now! Michelle Alexander, her new book is called The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness. That does it for our show. Check our job listings at democracynow.org. Online Outreach and Communications Manager open. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.